Okay, so you might have remembered a few videos ago we had this nice kind of uh, timeline set up. This is going to be really, really useful now where we start to look at optimizing fog a, a little bit more. So yeah, if we hit this simulate button, we should have this nice little looping animation. It's because of this timeline sequence, it's got that all set up. That's going to be really nice for checking our seams and checking what it's look like, looking like when it's moving. So if we go place actors and chuck in a regular exponential height fog, let's flip over to our non uh, non timeline one so pause the rendering on there unpause on here check out this render target and pilot the second capture cam so i've just done this block out so we can get an, an idea of where the density of the fog changes as you get distant objects skyscrapers being a good example so what we're seeing in the render target here is see how that fog is causing causing these lines here and there and it's kind of at this point where the fog kind of infinitely disappears into the like infinite abyss of the floor or uh, disappearing in a direction away towards the skyline towards the horizon so like one way to get around this um let's see how it's looking in this simulation uh, if we pause this one and pause this one so let's go back in the simulation see how it's looking so at ground level here not actually looking too bad which is kind of lucky again it's kind of really depends project to project whether you're going to get seams and things but an easy kind of fix is uh just build your build your scene like in a way where you're going to kind of if you if you can afford to in your scene try and hide the skyline hide the horizon um that way you know this blue area where it would cause seams is just kind of not visible at this point yeah that's you know Designing your scene in a way that kind of blocks out these problematic areas is uh, one easy fix. But say say we really do want some like intense dramatic fog going on in our scene, um, that's totally doable still. So if we start by adding in a height fog, if we go if we go over to place actors and go height fog, chuck that in there. First off, we simulate here. Right now in this simulation, we're actually not getting seams where we sometimes would. Usually this border area can cause seams. Let's Let's try and push it a little bit and up the density. So there we go. Now that we've upped the density a bit, we've upped it to like three. Um, you can see that you can see up it to like six and up it to ten even. We come out of the come out of the camera and set that again. You know, you get some really nice kind of rays and like a really, really cool atmospheric feel from having like a super high density fog. But the problem is when you jump in here, you got these, you got the seams. And what this is, is because of the volume is actually hitting the mesh of the camera. And again, it's that thing of each of the camera faces are seeing different things. Things, and that's where you're getting a uh, that's where you're getting the seams so really easy way to fix this is to up the start distance what this means is the camera is no longer uh hitting the fog quite so easily so let's see let's up this start distance a little bit so we've got a bit of like a buffer around where the fog starts compared to where the camera is so when you move away the distance increases and decreases see so you've got a bit of a buffer around the camera that way so now it's looking a little bit better so got a slight bit of a seam here. I guess something that could fix that is bringing this this intensity down a little. So yeah, I feel like a 1.4. It's just a case of tweaking these values a little bit. Uh, we're getting that further away uh, kind of tower looking a bit nicer now. So with our fog set to like 1.4 and our start distance pushed back a little bit. See how we're looking. Yeah, we've got a nice intense fog with no problems, no seams. We can tweak this. While the game's still playing, while the game's still getting on, you can see how much we can push it. Uh, but we do need to remember the value that we changed this to because when we stop the game again, we'll go back to the value we set before. So you can kind of like experiment on the fly here, you know, mess with some values. But just remember what, you, what you've what you been playing with and what you've got set there because when you hit pause, you'll go back to what you had before. So yeah this fog you can play with it in your own kind of way with a bit more art direction um but i just wanted to show you the kind of logic there um in general volumetric fog here you won't get away with that so easily if we check volumetric fog here you're gonna you're gonna get seams because we're dealing with dealing with volumes here um you can see if you can mess with some of these uh, a little bit but i haven't really found anything that works that well for volumetric so you can uncheck that and if we really want god rays uh because that's the main reason i would use volumetric fog if we really want god rays we can use things like um, fog cards or basic emitters or things like that. So if we go effects, we've got some volumetric particles here. And yeah, we can add we can add extra little bits like this. And these are these are volumetric these effects. Um, but yeah, if you're careful with sort of placing them, placing them carefully and placing them kind of fairly far away from your render. Jump back in here. 
It shouldn't really cause seams. That one's causing a seam there. It's partly to do with the, the amount of light that's coming in, I think, and uh, things like that. But, you know, this coming towards the camera, that's absolutely fine. But it's only at that point where you hit, where you hit, you actually come into contact with the fog. Uh, that's where you're going to get issues. So uh, being careful with your placement, placing them further away is a good way to avoid seams with these sort of more localized clouds. Um, this also goes for Niagara effects. If you just create this really quick uh, Niagara fog and try that in the scene, you know, we can make a lot more of a fancy emitter than this, but we can see quite often get away with some localized fog using Niagara. Uh, again, it goes by the same thing of if you really come straight into contact with it, it will uh, it will cause some seams. Let's test that out. There we go. See that? Yep. So running straight into Niagara systems and particles and fog is a bit of a no-no. Uh, there is a, I give a shout out to Sam Schroeder, who's made an awesome uh, blueprint for making uh, Niagara move around another blueprint. So if you set the camera as the thing that the, that the Niagara automatically moves around, moves away from, then um, then you could you could make a nice workaround for passing straight through particles. There might be a setting for, you know, particle extinction when close to camera or something like that. Might be a setting out there for that. I mean, you can also look at loading in your own kind of custom textures and things. These are just a load of cool things I've got off unsplash if you did some cool kind of scalar stuff with that you could um you could create a bit of a fog card on a plane you know definitely very much doable you know creating something like this but with a bit of um scale and rotation to it you know you can you can look up tutorials that'll help you do that but it shows you can just have like a very foggy atmospheric scene uh with other methods other than straight volumetric fog in your face you know you can you can still create these still create these nice misty effects even in a 360 render even in 360 real time yeah i hope that helps uh i'll link a few i'll link a few ways more advanced ways to make some cool fog cards and things like that but yeah that pretty much covers fog uh next up let's look at reflections get a reflective material in here and see what problems that causes and how to get around it so cheers, we're going to that in the next one. You're, you're jamming with the hottest disc jockey.